been married 18 months, together for 6 years, and I 28M think my wife 27F is emotionally cheating on me and not actually willing to work on the relationship issues we've been struggling with. Need advice, encouragement, and perspective. Long post, sorry. Sorry for the long post. I'm happy to answer any questions or provide further details as needed just ask. So things have been pretty rocky between my wife and I for several months. We had a rough 2020, didn't most of us? But I thought it was more due to the stress of my job, then COVID-19, then she lost her job and my job started getting worse as I felt a stressful anxiety to perform even better as the only income earner at the time. Then she started a new job and we sort of, drifted apart. Early this year we had a talk about this where I expressed my sadness that we are so distant and haven't connected in a long time. We haven't been physically intimate in nearly all this time tier. In early April I commenced individual therapy and it has really helped me process my thoughts and feelings and I've been actively trying to share those with my wife and be confident in being vulnerable and honest and genuine. She told me, however, that she feels like she is smothered and overwhelmed and needs space which I've tried to respect and give to her. Through all of this, though, she's indicated that she does want to work on improving things with me and getting to a place where we can both be happy. So I've had hope that if I keep trying and putting in effort, things will move toward a better place. It hasn't. I don't know if anything I'm doing is helping or hurting. Giving space, trying to be more supportive of her, not trying to be controlling or restrictive, she still seems so far away. I find myself holding back things if normally be excited to tell her about because she gives off a vibe that I annoy and distract and bother her. I brought this up to her and how I felt like she's not putting in much effort from my point of view, and that I don't think there's a way to improve our relationship without actually spending time together talking about it and addressing it. She indicated that she had been trying and putting in effort for the past year and felt like I was the one who wasn't doing anything and now she's kinda burnt out? I apologized and said I can't change what I did or did not do in the past, but I'm ready and willing and trying hard to fix things now, but I need her help too. She didn't have much to say to that. And because of the distance between us, I've started to notice how close she has gotten with a co-worker of hers. A single guy, about my age. They see each other every day, go out to lunch almost every day sometimes just the two of them, sometimes with others. My wife frequently stays late at work and, though not confirmed to me, I'm pretty sure he's always there too. They go out for drinks with co-workers and have attended soccer games together, just the two of them, and then gone out to bars and I know they've gone over to his place till after midnight as well. This all makes me feel super uneasy and hurt. My wife doesn't do any of this with me. In fact it seems like a chore to her to have to spend time with me. But she willingly and gleefully seems to adore being around this guy I'll call him Mark for ease of reference. This has been happening since like early March at least. I didn't bring anything up then because. 1. She even mentioned to me that she didn't want to make me sad by hanging out with Mark, but that he's a good guy and had never tried anything. 2. Things were starting to get rocky between me and her and I wasn't confident enough to assert myself. 3. I didn't want to feel like the jealous boyfriend type and tell her she can't be friends with a guy. Well, as things have deteriorated between us and I've observed her talking to him and spending what seems like most of her time with him, it's been hurting me more and more. I told her last week that they are making me uncomfortable. She asked well, what do you want me to do about it? And I felt very strongly that she should be the one to decide what she wants to do with the information I give to her about my feelings on her closeness with Mark. She never suggested anything, just said that I can put my mind at ease about that and it kinda tapered off into her accusing me of not trusting her. I told her that I do trust her to jot do anything physical with him but that I do not trust Mark because I don't know him. She seemed taken aback by that. After I told my wife that I was uncomfortable with her and Mark being together so much in their friendship or whatever it is, I felt very strongly that I shouldn't tell her what to do or anything. I didn't want her to feel controlled by me, but she also didn't propose anything to resolve this herself. The next few days I did notice she was at home more often and didn't go out for her usual drinks and happy hour with co-workers, which usually resulted in her spending extra time afterwards with Mark. 
I could tell she was sad and really down and I ended up telling her that I want her to be happy and do what makes her happy and I worry that she basically took that to mean that she should continue doing whatever she's doing with Mark regardless of my feelings. I've spoken with my therapist about my feelings on this and what I'm wary about and what is giving me pause and anxiety about my wife's friendship with her coworker. I told my therapist about how it makes me uncomfortable that my wife and Mark see each other all the time that she chooses actively to spend more time with Mark than me, that she seems to constantly be texting him, that I've seen her sitting on the other couch near me, texting him long threads or continually chatting when I am lucky when she sends me three texts during the day, that she has on several occasions gone out drinking with him and then went over to his place and didn't get home until around 2 AM when he drove her home. That just last weekend she brought our dog over while she went out with some girlfriends and had Mark dog sit while I was out of town and didn't even tell me about that until after the fact. That she seems to be happier when she comes back from hanging out with him or when she's talking him. That reminds me of how she seemed and acted when we were first dating and getting to know each other and that crushes me. I just have really weird gut feelings about the whole thing. From my perspective which is the only one I have since she won't talk to me about this I feel like lines have been crossed that should not be in a marriage. In fairness to her, maybe she doesn't think any boundaries have been broken. Or maybe she is towing the line and it's only a matter of time until stuff gets physical. I told my therapist that it hurt me when I explicitly told my wife last Sunday that her closeness with him is making me uncomfortable and uneasy she immediately responded with well we are just friends. So you can put your mind at ease about that. And then immediately shifted the conversation to well what do you want me to do about it? He's one of the few things that have brought me happiness and support lately which absolutely crushed me. It doesn't feel to me like they are just friends and I can't shake the weird feeling. And it makes me feel so bad and guilty to feel like this, because I want to give her the benefit of the doubt and not assume the worst, but also I feel like my feelings are valid and deserve to be respected too. Anyway. After I told her that I want her to be happy and do what makes her happy, this past Saturday night she went to a co-worker's wedding with a big group. This has been planned for a while, it was a small wedding, and I didn't go. Mark was there. They all got super drunk together and then a DD brought her home at 1am and she was absolutely wasted and while I was helping get her into bed and making sure she'd be okay, she just kept repeating over and over how's Mark? Is Mark okay? Did Mark get home? And I said I'm sure he's fine. I don't have his number, you can find out tomorrow. Then she goes, I know his number. And started saying my number. That hurt. Then she kept asking about how he was doing and if he was okay until she fell asleep. Now, a couple days out of that moment and still processing it, I feel even more like she's totally lost feelings and attraction for me and that she's not just friends with this guy but is more emotionally invested in him than she's willing to let on or maybe even admit to herself. It's really hurting me and I can't get it out of my head and my mind keeps wandering and assuming things and I really want to have a real honest conversation about this with her but I'm nervous that. 1. It's going to come out as accusatory and interrogative on my part and make her super defensive and dismissive from the get-go. And 2. I get all hung up that I already shut the door on this issue and shouldn't rehash it with her because I already brought up that I'm uncomfortable with their dynamic and then a few days later told her I just want her to be happy and do what makes her happy. I'm constantly hurting. There's a pit in my stomach. I don't have an appetite. I'm not sleeping. I'm losing weight. I can't focus or concentrate. I worry all the time about if she's flirting with him or texting him sexual stuff or hugging him or if they cuddle when they're together all things she doesn't do with me. I get angry because he's a single dude who also actively chooses to spend all his time with a married woman what's in it for him? And then I feel guilty about feeling all this stuff. Anyway. I'd love some advice. I just want this hurt to stop. I want her to be honest with me. If she's done with us, then tell me. If she would rather be with him, then tell me. If she's emotionally cheating, I want her to know that, own it, and understand how it's hurting me. How can I broach this subject with her? Should I? How can I get some, answers and definition about the dynamic between her and Mark but not in an accustory interrogative way? Is she emotionally cheating on me? 
how should I confront this? My therapist didn't really have suggestions for me beyond yes you should have this conversation and you should firmly know going into what your boundaries for a married relationship, even one that's rocky, are and what is and is not okay for your partner to do. I've confided in several close friends and my sister about the details I shared here and every single one of them thought it was ducked up, even for my wife to be doing in a marriage where everything was okay. That makes me feel a bit more validated, but I still don't know the best way to go about initiating this conversation and having it be an open and honest discussion where my thoughts and feelings can be heard and where she doesn't immediately feel defensive and defective. Please help. I welcome any and all advice, comments, thoughts. And please be blunt. Feel free to DM as well. Update, after post re, emotional affair. Wife still denying anything, expressing zero remorse or acknowledgement of my feelings. This goes against what many people here have said about me not engaging with her. She could tell something was up with me and kept asking what was going on and what's bothering me. I finally broke and talked to her. I mentioned my specific concerns and told her that what's been happening is not okay and that it feels like lines and boundaries are being crossed. She seemed unfazed. She seemed offended that I would even think that something inappropriate was going on. She de need that they have been physical together. She said I've only been out till 2 AM with him twice. Yeah, well that's too too many times for me, I said. She seemed to refuse to even attempt, to see it from my point of view or an outside perspective. It's telling to me that so many other people could recognize that maybe even texting a coworker so much and worrying about his well-being after the drinking was crossing a line. My wife seems to refuse to believe that she's crossing lines. She refused to acknowledge that maybe what she's doing is wrong or actually hurtful. He's like my best friend right now. Yeah, well why can't I be that? I'm your husband. I know things are rocky and weird with us right now but I'm trying to work on things and I can't help but feel there's stuff you're not telling me. All I want is for her to accept some, responsibility and remorse. She kept saying what do you want me to do? She kept pointing out that they really haven't been together too much or stayed out late more than twice. Uck it just feels like we got nowhere. When I spoke with her and told her how hurt and uncomfortable her behavior with Mark is making me, she seemed unfazed. Her first reaction, rather than being sorry or concerned that I'm being hurt, was to say well what do you want me to do about it? I shouldn't have to walk her through this. She's a very intelligent person, she should be able to see that maybe there's even just a slight chance that what she's doing would look bad to anyone looking from the outside in. She's blinded by whatever she's feeling and doing. She kept, deflecting. I told her it made me uncomfortable that she was out till 2am drunk with him, that it was weird. She said well that's only happened twice. She noted that they've only been to three soccer game dates together. That doesn't matter to me. The amount of times doesn't matter. What matters is that now she knows how it is hurting me and that I told her I am not going to put up with it anymore. She should proceed accordingly. I told her that I want to be happy and I want to be with someone who makes me happy. I said I want her to be with someone she wants to be with also. And I don't want either of us to have to feel effort or like every day we have to try to conjure up feelings for the other person. She told me she loves me and wants to be with me. It felt hollow. I told her she seems completely emotionally invested in him and that there's no more room for me. I told her I feel like a roommate who sits around while she dates Mark. She kept saying we're just friends and I'm not even with him all that much. She de need any physical intimacy between them. She said that other co-workers have asked her if anything is going on between her and Mark. I asked her what does is anything going on mean to her? She couldn't spell it out. I told her that I find it incredibly hard to believe that Mark a single guy my age has anything to gain from being just friends with a married woman. I told her that no matter how good of a guy she thinks he is, he has certainly had the thought crossed his mind of hmm, what if? She de need that they talk about their feelings for each other. I don't believe it. I told her that if he knows about our marriage issues, then it makes it even more suspicious that he continues to hang around. It's like he's just waiting for the off chance we do break up so he can have her with no strings. I can't shake the feeling that she's lying to me. Something more has to be going on and she is trickle truthing me. I feel gaslit, I feel crazy that I'm feeling so bothered and anxious by all this. 
I wish she'd show some ducking remorse or own up to it. I told her how I sat on telling her my true feelings about this for so long because I was being too considerate of her feelings and neglecting my own, but that I needed to protect myself going forward. I told her we need to tell each other the hard stuff that might hurt the other person and be ready to do so. I mentioned that I want to be open and honest and vulnerable with her and would expect the same from her. Even if she thinks it'll hurt me or I can't handle it, I want her to tell me, I am not going to talk to her about this again. There's no point. She seems unwilling to accept that she's in the wrong here and very plainly hurting a person she claims to love. I know I'm being naive and stupid and will get tons of comments telling me similarly, but I am struggling so hard to get my head and heart around the idea of snooping into her phone. Honestly, I've been curious. But despite the heartbreak she's causing me, it's really hard for me to pull the trigger on that. And even if I did and even if I found something damning, I think I'd have an even more difficult time figuring out how to best confront her with that information. I feel so down on myself that I feel this way. That I feel so stuck. That I've let myself get to this position. I can't stop thinking where I screwed up along the way, what's wrong with me, what can I change, how can I change, why is this happening, I am so tired of all of this. Update 2, we talked. She confessed that she's in love with someone else. I told her it's over. Hardest thing I've ever done. I told her I know about her and Mark. I told her that I don't want to do this anymore and that I want her to be happy and do what makes her happy, but if that includes being with Mark, then I don't want to continue to be together. I told her we should go our separate ways. I told her I don't want to be in a marriage with a woman who isn't in love with me and isn't happy with me. She cried and cried and confessed that she and Mark do have feelings for each other but she is adamant that it's progressed to nothing physical. I told her that regardless, I don't feel that we can continue how things are and that we should separate. I threw out the D word several times and she got super upset and emotional saying that I'd already made up my mind without her and wasn't even discussing it. I told her that she had made up her mind to pursue those feelings with Mark and did nothing to stop it back then. That put her on edge too she told me I was being mean, and not understanding. I told her that I can understand her losing feelings for me and falling in love with someone else, but that I don't have to accept an EA and I wasn't going to put up with this anymore. Then she started begging, crying, saying that it seems like a rash, drastic decision to divorce and that we should try just an actual separating first. I said, I don't know what that will do for us. You'll just go off with Mark, right? She didn't really answer. She maintained that she doesn't want to jump straight to divorce. I maintain that I see no other option at this point. Even marriage counseling in my view wouldn't work. Because of work obligations, I can't just leave. But I booked a flight to go stay with my family this weekend. I cannot describe the immense relief I felt when I told her we should proceed to get divorced. The other good feeling I had was basically realizing that, she's made a choice. She's picking him. By not outright saying she'll cut things off completely with him, she's made a choice. I don't want to be with someone who won't choose me. Edit, for everyone concerned about the process of me moving forward with the divorce. 1. Our finances are already separated and we have very little marital property under the law. The biggest dispute will be over our dog. 2. I am in a no-fault divorce state and the 60-day separation requirement before the divorce can be finalized is already met as we have been living under the same roof without sexual cohabitation for over 60 days. I don't foresee this being too procedurally or financially difficult. Emotionally and mentally? For sure. Update 3. Gave her the divorce papers. Got a new job. Trying to move on and start healing but it's so hard. I served the divorce papers earlier this week. It went better than expected. We didn't really fight, she didn't try to blame shift or gaslight me this time. In fact, she apologized for not being easy to deal with lately and for not handling the whole Mark thing very well. She said that she always felt like not crossing any lines or boundaries physically prevented it from being cheating. She didn't realize until I started talking more seriously about it to her that the emotional affair aspect of it all was very real and very devastating to me. It was good to hear that. Doesn't change anything for me. But at least there was some ounce of acknowledgement from her. She told me she's sorry she did things that hurt me but that none of it was intentional. I still don't believe that she is being honest with me. 
She's lied to my face for months and has treated me like less than even a roommate for so long. It hurts to know that the woman I thought I could love and trust more than anything was so capable of hurting me like this. She asked if we could still be friends after all of this. Ha! Huh. She told me I am her best friend and she doesn't want to lose me. She hasn't even treated me like a best friend for months. In fact she has straight up told me that Mark is her best friend. I don't want to deal with that. Everything in my life reminds me of her in some way books, music, TV shows and movies, restaurants, even certain roads I have to drive down. I feel sick to my stomach every morning when I wake up and that turns into me feeling numb and sluggish the rest of the days. I go to the gym or go on a run every morning to try and set myself up for a better day. It helps, but I think it's because I'm so used to doing it out of habit. I'm having a hard time eating and sleeping and focusing on anything else. I fixate on all this, on her, on us, on our past, on what I could have done differently or better. I still find myself feeling like it's all my fault like I wasn't good enough for her and she had to seek satisfaction from someone else. It sucks to feel like that. Anyway, I got offered a great new job in my old home state. So around the first week of August I will be starting my new job and preparing my complete move out of this toxic environment I'm in now. I'm going to be moving to about 30 minutes from my family and will be closer to a couple of my very best friends. I think that will be good for me. I'm putting in my two weeks notice at my current job today. I anticipate the rest of the divorce should go smoothly. I told her I don't care about much of the stuff we have or the furniture. I just want to take the bed I've been sleeping in in the guest room, the desk and bookshelf I have used for working remotely, and a dresser to assist me in storing clothes. Everything else I don't care about. I just want to disassociate from everything about her and be able to move on and heal. The worst part though? She is going to get to keep our dog. I always knew our puppy was going to be the biggest sticking point. She was going to fight me tooth and nail for him. She knows how much I care for him and how bonded he and I are and how dedicated I am to him. I made clear to her that I want to keep him but she adamantly refused. She said that she can't believe I'd be willing to leave her high and dry and with nobody and even try to take her dog away from her too. She is jealous that I am closer with my family than she is with hers and that I'm moving to be near my parents and siblings. Also how am I leaving her high and dry? I'm giving her practically everything. Plus, she has Mark now, I decided that I just want this to be over with and I want to start moving on from this. And if the dog is going to be the only thing slowing that down, I felt like I needed to give him up for my own sanity. But it's going to be so hard. It feels like I'm losing two people that I love, and it's devastating. Or at least one soul that I love entirely, and another person that I love and thought loved me and cared about me and that ended up not being the case. I feel like I mean nothing to her. Like everything I've done in the years we've been together has been worthless. I'm so tired, so strained, so ready for it all to end. Update 4. Finally, a good update in this divorce journey. Hoping this can provide some encouragement and support to those about to embark on this very difficult path. Update 4. Finally a good update. It's been about 2 months since I resolved to get divorced, about 6 weeks since I prepared the divorce papers and almost a month since I moved out and moved across the country to start a new job. It has been an incredibly wild, emotional journey. Lots of good days and bad days, and the bad ones come and go in waves. The best thing I can do during those bad waves is just ride them out and know that when the next ones hit, I'll be better prepared to ride them. Someone shared with me recently, the five most stressful events in life. 1. The death of a loved one. 2. Divorce. 3. Moving. 4. Major illness. 5. Loss of job. I realized that I pretty much checked off 3 of the top 5 and I could even throw in death of a loved one, since my STBXW's infidelity kale the persona of who I thought she really was. In situations where you get a new job, or make a big move, you will lean on your partner, but that was not something I was able to do this time, making my loss of her even more extreme. I have experienced bouts of anxiety, depression, stress, and lots of sleepless nights. Less now, than 6 to 8 weeks ago when I was in the middle of all this and still trying to figure out what to do. I am doing better now, so much better than I could have expected. 
So I wanted to provide an update on what is good that is going on in my life right now. The new job is going great. I was nervous at first starting a new thing but honestly, this new firm is excellent. The other people here are so friendly and helpful. And the law that I am practicing combines my two favorite areas of law and I am learning a lot and really enjoying it. Tomorrow was my 29th birthday, and I had some friends visit me from out of state. Went on a long run, ate tons of good food, and had a great day. I have always been exercise minded, but it definitely waned when I was going through D-Day and living with my ex and it was hard to focus on physical activity. But I have consistently been returning to the gym since I moved away, and I have been training for a marathon. I am running at the third week of September with my sister who has been a huge support for me during this time. The marathon is at Mount Rushmore and will be very, very cool and refreshing to do. I have re-found my love of reading. Here are some books a mix of fiction non-fiction and self-help that I have really enjoyed lately. I am always welcome to suggestions and recommendations. Billy Summers by Stephen King The Whisper Man by Alex North The Subtle Art of Not Giving AFCK by Mark Manson The Gifts of Imperfect by Brené Brown Maybe You Should Talk to Someone by Lori Gottlieb Severance by Ling Ma Atomic Habits by James Clear What Happened to You? By Oprah Winfrey and Bruce D. Perry The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz The Body Keeps the Score by D. Vander Koch I have found my own place. The housing market is insane out where I am right now, so buying a house is simply just not feasible for me at the moment. But I found a great two-bedroom apartment at a reasonable price, in a great part of town close enough to my office downtown to not make the commute a pain, but far enough away to not be paying downtown premium prices. Plus, it is right near a bunch of excellent dog parks, walking trails, and mountain hiking areas so I can spend a lot of time being active and outdoors with the new dog I will be adopting. Brings me to my next point, I got to meet the new dog I am adopting today. I met him at a park and got to play fetch with him and take him on a walk. He was so friendly, so playful, and so happy to hang out with me. It made my heart feel so full and I am so happy to know that this is going to work out for me. His name is Marley and he is going to be my new best buddy. Update one month since moving out. Needing more help support as the logistical side of divorce starts to wind down. It has been several months since I learned about my wife's infidelity and since our marriage really started breaking down. It's been over a month since divorce papers and the separation agreement were filed. Today marks one month since I moved out, moved across the country, started a new job, and really tried to take back my life. I know I still have much work to do. Luckily, I found a therapist recently that I vibe really well with. I met with her for my third session yesterday and I am really looking forward to continue my work and development with therapy. She specializes in infidelity-based trauma, which I definitely need. A lot of people in my life have already been suggesting they could set me up on dates and asking me when I'm going to go out with another woman, and I am just, not at all close to being ready for that. I'm not. My therapist was very helpful in moving beyond that at all and straight up asking me if I am even ready to be fully social i.e., making new friends. I told her, honestly, I am not. I explained that so much has happened in my life within the past two months that I am just exhausted even if I don't want to admit it to myself. I said that it feels like my social gas tank is perpetually on empty and I can't find a gas station to fill it up at anywhere. My therapist said this is a common feeling and that I need to really focus my time and energy right now on one setting and sticking to healthy boundaries and two dating and befriending only myself. I agree. I get the need to be around other people and have friendships but like, my sister keeps trying to invite me out to social activities with her friend group all around my age and I've gone to a few and I'm just like, so tired. I have enjoyed the occasions that I have had to visit with my old friends that I have known and been close to for years, but actually making new friends right now is a real struggle for me. Not to mention even the thought prospect of dating or being intimate with somebody else right now. Anyway, I think even receiving praise from strangers online here affects me in a way that makes me feel like the absence of praise is displeasure, and so hearing that I am doing really good makes me feel like I am farther along than I really might be. Then when I hear the darker doses of reality that, granted, I need, it kind of brings me down. I guess, 
I took a lot of advice and moved forward with a lot of what people suggested I do here and on our surviving infidelity early on, and now that I am wrapping up the logistics of the divorce process, and have moved away and started a new job, I am starting to realize just how much I still struggle every single day to stop thinking about my STBXW. I am having a really hard time figuring out the best way to continue my journey forward through grief and healing. In the middle of finding out about the affair and deciding to divorce, everything seems so logistically simple and procedural, that's how my mind works and I took that straightforward approach. 1. File papers. 2. Pack my stuff. 3. Move out. 4. Start new job. 5. Find new apartment. 6. Etc. Etc. Now, I've done all that, and I'm like, what is the next step? Therapy? Check. Still proceeding with that. I know everyone says no contact, no contact, no contact. I get it, I'm doing that. But what else can I do right now? My STBXW is still deep in my head, no matter how much no contact I'm doing. In fact, last night I had a horrid dream about her where I discovered she and her AP started posting GIFs of their sexual adventures on NSFW subreddits. I woke up feeling sick to my stomach and haven't been able to shake those thoughts and awful feelings from my mind and body today. It's awful, it's depressing, it causes me anxiety, it makes me not want to go to sleep so I don't have to risk having similar dreams and permeating thoughts all throughout the next several days. I have found myself turning to workaholism as a coping mechanism which, while better than wallowing away with a bottle of alcohol, is still unhealthy and detrimental. Sigh. I am sorry for the long, rambling, venting post. Despite trying as hard as I can to put on a brave face and keep moving forward, I feel really weak, downtrodden, beaten. If anyone has advice and encouragement they can offer me based on their own experience, I'd appreciate it. What do you do in the interim between taking all the necessary steps to commence the divorce and leave the marriage and start, moving on? I just kinda feel lost. Update, Christmas has been, a hell of a lot harder than I figured it would be. I thought I was doing okay. I thought I could distract myself. I thought I could pretend that the first Christmas post-divorce would be alright. I went on a trip with my family to celebrate the holiday. It's been more frustrating than fun. Seeing my parents and my siblings all interact with and hug and hold hands and talk with their significant others has been super hard on me. I feel like just these last couple of days of Christmas vacation have knocked me backwards a few yards on my path to healing. I felt like I was doing so well and boom it's like I opened a closet and all this infidelity related trauma and PTSD started pouring out. I felt miserable all Christmas. I still do. I just want to be alone at this point. I'm way over my social limit right now, with all these heavy feelings about to spill out of me. On Christmas, I couldn't help but think about all the holiday traditions and memories I made with my ex-wife and ex-puppy over the last several years that are suddenly, cruelly, lost out the window. The holiday brought back all that sadness I felt throughout this year. All the betrayal I felt. The anger at my ex-wife for not being willing to communicate with me about what was really going on. For making me feel that it was somehow my fault. For leading me to believe that she was willing to work on things, but doing nothing to actually demonstrate that. For leading me on, letting me think that me doing what she told me she needed, for giving her space, was all to help us. And she was going behind my back and investing all her time and energy into pursuing another relationship. I keep beating myself up. Thinking about how I feel so down and miserable and broken up so often and how I have all these pieces I have to pick up to start to put my life back together and she has, seemingly nothing like that. She got to keep the house we lived in, the dog we raised, the friends we made, the restaurants we loved, the new boyfriend she started dating while we were married. And here I am, terrified of being alone forever. Nervous to start interacting with women again someday. Clueless as to how or when, to even begin. I'm upset about how things ended. I'm angry at myself for not speaking up sooner. For not defending myself when she was treating me poorly. For not calling her out on her ass at like staying out till 2 AM, getting drunk and watching movies with another man while her husband stayed home, what the hell is that? For not making it abundantly clear that I was being hurt and felt disrespected and that lines were being crossed in our marriage. 
It makes me so sad to think how she didn't even seem to fight for us. How I wasn't worth her just telling the other guy no or cutting things off the moment they started to get even close to the line. Why wasn't I worth that to her? How much of our relationship was be LLS it to her? How much of it, if any, was real? I remember how ducking devastating it was when, after I told her we should get divorced, she cried and said that seemed really drastic and that we should try a separation for a few months first. I responded, why, so you can just duck around with Mark or AP for a few months and then decide you don't want to be with me. No, let's get it over with now. I told her point blank several times that we could not improve our relationship while the other guy was a part of that relationship too because, no matter what she said, he certainly was a part of it against my will and knowledge. She always refused to cut him out or deflect it and told me he had nothing to do with us. I asked her one last time to cut ties with him and she flat out said no. I knew it was over. I'm angry that I lost friends when I moved. I was planning to get season tickets to the local NFL team near where I used to live and go to football games every week with them. Now, I watch them on TV and feel like s it that I'm not there with those buddies I got to know and subsequently lost. I don't want her back. I don't want anything to do with her. Well, that's not true. I do wish I could know if the way she handled things has ducked her up as much as it's ducked with my head. I know I'm not ever going to get that closure from her but I wish she could truly know how badly she made me feel, how absolutely torn apart and broken I have been. I wish I knew that she was feeling guilty and torn up for how she treated me. A Taylor Swift lyric has been hitting close to home with me lately, just between us did the love affair maim you too? I miss coming home to someone to talk to. I miss having someone to text memes and inside jokes too. I miss having someone miss me. I miss being hugged and kissed. I miss being desired. I miss going on long drives and listening to meaningful music and holding hands with my partner. I miss having a partner and now. Months after the divorce, I realize with her, I never really even had a partner. Anyway. Sorry for the ranting. Why do I keep hashing this out? Why do I keep thinking these things? Having the same arguments with myself over and over again? Why can't she get out of my head? Update, a hopeful post, more than 6 months have passed since I moved out, things are so much better for me now. First off, let me just start by expressing my absolute heartfelt. Thanks for the support, encouragement, tough love, blunt advice, and kind messages that I received from this community. The huge outpouring of support I received here brought me much needed strength. I am doing much better than I was 6 or 7 months ago when I was posting here about my ex's infidelity and my divorce. Like, objectively so, I have a fantastic job, which is much better than the one I left. Live in a great city, close to family and tons of beautiful outdoor activities. Have an amazingly fun, loving, and loyal dog get to travel for both work and for fun at least once a month I'm typing this from an airport bar. Returning from a trip where I visited old friends who I left when I moved away and making tons of new friends have started to go out on dates and spending more time with girls, it's been fun. Continuing my therapy and improving myself mentally. Have a consistent weight lifting routine and I'm improving myself physically I am developing my skills at playing guitar and getting into new hobbies I bought a new truck to help take my dog and I on many adventures. And best of all, I have started to set clear boundaries to help me live my own authentic life and value myself for who I am. I realize now that I was treated terribly by my ex-wife, who for many years in our relationship merely took advantage of who I was and my kindnesses. I allowed myself to be a doormat for far too long. The friends that I went to visit for the Super Bowl this weekend each pulled me aside and told me how proud they are of me. They know the circumstances of the divorce and the infidelity. They each told me that I deserve better, that they wish I had seen that value in myself sooner. They told me that my ex-wife is, basically just living life as a city person. They don't have much contact, or even friendship, with her anymore and a couple of these friends have known her for like 12 plus years. And are still not willing to maintain sincere friendships with a person who would do this to her husband. My friends made me feel so loved, so respected and made me realize for the first time in my life that when I go against my desires to always be selfless, and take care of myself and put myself first, 
I become a stronger, more confident, and happier person. Now, all that said, I still have rough days. I still get triggered by a bad dream every now and then, or by a song that played at my wedding, or one that I sang at a concert with my ex. But these bad moments are certainly outweighed by the good moments I am living in this new chapter of my life. Things are only looking up from here. Now, if you'll excuse me, I am about to board my flight home and get ready for a date with the cute lady I've been spending some time with lately.